Hey everybody, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. That's Alex over there. I'm Kirby. Um, every day, and when I say every day, I mean literally every day. I I have, and Alex, you probably have the same situation. People come up to me and ask or call, get my number through a friend, text, email, you know, Snapbook, Snapchat, whatever this stuff called. They reach out and ask questions about, hey, I want to do this. I want to do that. But then you find out that they want to do it, but they don't want to go through the grind of making it happen. Today we're going to talk about the you know the excuses that people have on why they don't want that they can't do stuff. And with that being said, I was going to cue the music, do the intro. Hey everybody, welcome back to Pass Money. Like we said, we're going to talk about the excuses people have. Um, so Alex, starting off, what are like, I know people come to you and, and ask about different financial situations, right? Yeah. So what is the excuse, what is the excuse you get most from people once you, you know, give them some direction on what they need to do? What's that? What's the biggest excuse you hear? This is the best topic. I just want to say, because I hear this shit too much. Like, okay. And I've, I've started to react kind of the same way as you. Like I have, there's a couple people that actually have for years i mean like three years been telling me oh yeah i'm gonna buy a rental property you know i'm getting with my boys we're, we're getting money together we're gonna buy a property and it still hasn't happened and then the same person is like oh you know once i finish buying this car then i'll go get the property but like you have your priorities completely out of whack like the car should come last bicycle to work if you have to like get a cheaper beater car like you don't need and the guy is trying to buy like a bmw <laughs> so you're definitely never going to buy a rental property. And it's just the same excuses. It's like, why are you constantly talking about doing it, but you're not doing it? And so what I mean by I'm reacting like you is I'll tell them, oh, that's cool. I just got another property like this one that I'm buying right now. And so they're like, wow, right. Way to make me feel like <laughs> so then they get in their feelings. But it's like what like. What is actually holding you back? Like, if you just make the goal out of it, you will be able to achieve it. And so people, they have their priorities out of whack. Like, they want to have liabilities come first before assets. And they're they're too worried about what makes them feel good, buying a nice car, buying a car that they like, that they're passionate about, rather than buying them something that will buy them the next asset and then the next one to then buy them stuff that they like in the future. Like they want everything that makes them feel good right there and then rather than eating crap like Gary Vee says to later enjoy it. Yeah, and and having that motivation, like you said, buying the, the car is if that's what they want to do later, later down the road. But you see it like you said, all the time is, is they think that, oh, I'm going to buy one rental property and the next thing you know, I'm going to have a Lambo. I'm going to have a Mercedes. No, that's not how it works. I talked to a guy yesterday. Oh yeah, I want that Lamborghini. How about you want to work hard to get some money first to be able to buy the Lamborghini? But it's just, they think that, you know, that one thing, and like you said, oh, I'm going to get with my boys and we're going to get a rental property. One property that you got split 50%. 50 so let's just use you know, quick math here. Let's say they bought a two hundred thousand dollar property. They let's say they getting two thousand dollars a month in rent. The mortgage itself is going to be fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars, and then you add in you know repairs, vacancies, you know maintenance, and all that. The property probably won't even cash flow. But let's say in this scenario, it does cash flow. It's going to cash flow one two hundred bucks, and then you got to split that fifty fifty. So Y'all getting a hundred bucks a month. You're not getting a Lambo and a Mercedes off of that cash flow. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. but that's but the thing is, that's how majority of people think. But the thing is, if they want it, if they really want it, it should be all right. I'm about to go get my buddy. So if you come in with so if let's say me and you, we we partnering up on a deal. So we want to buy rental properties with an S. So I should be working as hard as possible, let's just say for a year. 
to accumulate every dollar I have, not spending anything, you know, lowering my expenses. Maybe if I'm renting a place or if I got a house, I'm moving people into the bedrooms, renting out the bedrooms to accumulate as much capital as I have, like I would expect you to do. Then we pull the money together. Instead of buying one rental property, we sitting out there trying to say, okay, we're going to put 20, 25% down on multiple properties and start doing like that. Then rent. And then so the cash flow from all of those properties, we're pulling that together. We're going to rent and repeat this again for, for five to seven years. We're going to keep doing this five to seven years over and over and over again. Then we will amass, you know, 40, 50 properties. Then we maybe can start talking about, all right, we can kick these damn uh, roommates out of our house. Maybe if you want to. But we're still not at the Lambo stage yet because we still got to keep hustling and grinding and pushing through. So when you get to year 10, then you're starting to talk about, okay, now we can, you know, look at maybe a better car or something like that. But it shouldn't be, oh, and it's the microwave society that we always talk about. Everybody want it instantly. Everybody just want to floss and show off for everybody else, but they don't want to go through the grind. But if they want it bad enough, they'll do it. But most people don't want to go through. Every time I give somebody advice on what to do, they come back with, oh man, but this, but this. They always got excuses. Like when you like you said, you answer the questions like I do when uh when I oh yeah, I just bought this property in a way to custom crush your dreams. Like I don't use partners at all. So every dollar is accumulated is accumulated by the household. I mean, I don't consider my wife a partner. I mean, my wife's smarter than I am. So, so, but all the money is accumulated in the household by me. I'm not going out there. I'm not looking at, uh, you know, private lenders and stuff like that. The money is accumulated and then we go out. Not that money is accumulated faster because we have so many units, but the money is accumulated and we go out and deploy it, go out and deploy it, go out and deploy it. But we still not deploying it to say, oh, we need this. We need that. I mean, I, I, I'll i admit it now, I'm 40. So so uh, those things, I, I ain't trying to impress these young Thundercats. I get in the, I get in one of those fast cars and kill myself. Like almost <laughs> when, uh, when I was in Texas, when I was in Texas uh, checking out my, uh, my commercial property, they gave me one of those Challenger Hemis. I almost wrapped it around. <laughs> I almost wrapped it around a pole because, you know, I'm used to about two cylinders. I ain't used to all those extra cylinders. I push the gas. I look down. I'm at eighty. Nah, uh, nah. Uh. I got to live to see this. But that's what everybody want to do. And that's you know the social media world out there give that false influence to make people think, oh, you haven't made it unless you do this. I mean, and it goes both sides. Men, women, they think you know a million dollars a year is oh what you need to get, but they just want the million dollars. They don't want to go through the grind and get there. They just oh yeah. I, well, we're in a property, you know, I'm going, I'm going to buy me a Bentley. Really? Did, did you do the numbers when you thought of this? Do the numbers and but go ahead. I'll get off my no, get exactly. off my uh soapbox. I mean, this will be my second rental property, the one I'm buying now. And the cash flow between the two is gonna be like like it, it cash, let's say cash flow after accounting property management, and even though I'm managing it myself, but maintenance, all that the true cash flow would be around like $700. Now, money coming in after, say, the mortgages or the expenses, you know, the, the, the taxes and all that is about 900 a month. But still, like, even with 900 a month, that's, you can't even live off of that. You know what I mean? So it's like, and that's two rental properties. So then, you know, it's gonna, let's say four, that's only 1800 a month. You know, it's like, you really need to get a lot. And like you said, if you're going to actually get with a group of friends, and it's not saying that can't be done, but that group has to fully be serious. And it's easier to have one person that's serious and do it yourself being you, where you know yourself and you're going to actually do it. You're going to acquire the properties. You're going to work as hard as you can to acquire it. Then have to expect the other person or the other two or three the more people you have in a deal, it gets harder and harder to actually count on those people to work as hard as you to towards the same goal. And I mean, like the other thing that I'm seeing, like people, because it's multiple people that actually come to me about talking about buying properties, but they actually don't do it. The other excuse I hear is relationships where, oh, I want to do this, but my boyfriend isn't on board or my girlfriend isn't on board. 
I mean, the only response I have to that is then dump them. I mean, there's like, if you are with someone that isn't on the same page as you, then why even be with them? And this goes back to my point where I say like, you know, you live, you only live on the world for about 80 years. So are you really going to settle down with someone who's going to hold you back your whole life? You're going to have all this potential in life, but you're throwing it out the way because you feel butterflies in your stomach for this person. Like, no, like you'll, you'll feel the same way for someone who's actually on board with you. So find that person who's on board with you and people, they're not strong enough. Like for me, I mean, I've had to cut out friends in my life, but me cutting out friends is like, I don't think about it the next day. It's just like, all right, you're done. Like, I, I got to move on. Sorry. Like, I don't have time to worry about that stuff. And people, they can't, they can't detach their emotions from things like that. Yeah. I mean, me, I cut friends, family. I, me, I, I got a five state rule. I mean, I, my family can be within five states for me because that's just <laughs> how it is. I don't, there's nothing that's, there's nothing that's going to stand in my way to make stuff happen. That's how it's, that's just how it's ingrained in me. Nobody can stop what I have going on because at the end of the day, and it's just as simple, at the end of the day, every excuse why people can't do stuff, when times get hard, those same people or reasons want to bail you out when times get hard. People always say, oh man, why you don't call and help people out more often? Well, I do, I just don't call them. Uh, but, But it's, and that's and that's the key of it. I I do help people, but I just don't help them. But the reason why it's like that, or they have that perception of me, is a simple answer. If I'm always helping them, I'm always helping them, always helping them. They become dependent on me helping them, so they still make crazy decisions because they say, "Oh, Kirby gonna come and help me and help me get it done." So they're gonna continue making those same stupid decisions. But if I ever get into a financial situation, I can never call anybody at help to give an assist. Just because my lifestyle is different, my expenses would be way more higher. And if I'm having to give you two, three, four, you know, a couple thousand dollars every now and then, I know I can't call you if a roof fly off in Florida during a hurricane. Like, hey, you got an extra twenty thousand dollars laying on the side. I can't do it. I mean, they seem they can call, think they can call me and ask for it, but I couldn't do. I can never reciprocate that. And that's the, and that's the thing is nobody wants to put in the work to make their dreams come to fruition. They want to find the get rich quick scheme. They want to find the sugar daddy, sugar mama, whatever you call it these days. Um they want to they want to uh buy water at they want to buy water at Texas Day Brazil when they should be getting a drink. <laughs> <laughs> that was a shot at Alex y'all. We finally got him out. We finally got him out to Texas Day Brazil. We had we made him spend some money. But um but no but that's those those are things they they never want to make that sacrifice to push for. They they rather come up with an excuse and say why they don't have it. And I think and I honestly believe people just want to have an excuse. They really don't want it. I really believe people really don't want it. They like the idea, but they really don't want it. And we'll get into another video about another topic about this subject. But that's what I just don't believe people want it. They just want to say they want to have that illusion gave people that illusion that hey yeah I, I want it but oh but I got all these excuses so I can't have it so no I'm not gonna do it it's because they really don't want it that's just my viewpoint on it but guys with all that being said leave a comment down below if you have any questions or any responses to what we're saying uh, hit the like button subscribe share and we'll see you guys in the next video